Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, this week in America. Journey of Hope to Heaven and Back is the story of Jeannie Enstad. It's a story of survival of 28 years of physical pain, many surgeries from cancer and open heart to more minor ones, loneliness, various physical illnesses, loss of jobs with the struggle of paying nearly $300,000 in medical bills, and divorces. The story of fighting off the demons of depression from 24 hours of pain, experiencing heaven not just once, but twice. Jeannie was born and raised in a small town in Ohio, shaped her long hours working on the family farm. She's an educator, curriculum, and grant writer, speaker, Chamber of Commerce Citizen of the Year Award winner, also recipient of the Ohio Volunteer State Award and a Cancer Survivor Award. Jeannie Enstead, author of A Journey of Hope to Heaven and Back, is our guest on This Week in America. Jeannie, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. What an inspirational story. You talk about the the 28 years of pain and suffering that you went through. Let's go back to when this began. You obviously were a very active person. You you were a runner and discovered one day that you needed open-heart surgery. Talk about that because that really changed your life dramatically at that point, didn't it? It did. I was um, practicing for the Boston Marathon, and you have to qualify, and I was up to eight-minute miles, and I was practicing for a couple months, and then all of a sudden, I had pain going down my left arm, and I thought, whatever. I went to a neurologist, and he's like, I don't think it's a neurological problem. He sends me to a cardiologist, and I'm like, you got the wrong patient. There's no way I could run that many miles in that time, and so... I went in for, they did a heart cath, and they're like, your mitral valve is bad. And I said, can't be. You know, I felt I was just in disbelief. Um, I remember going home, running a stop sign and running a stop light. And I'm thinking, you know, I went into the closet to get away from it. And I'm like, you can't hide it from your body for sure. Um, But anyway, I went in for, uh, they had to go in and repair my mitral valve, which I had no symptoms before that, which was really a shock. Yeah, that made a big change from one looking forward to running the Boston Marathon to being in the hospital and all these tubes in you. <laughs> well, yes, and you can imagine that you're fit, you're getting ready for a marathon, you think you're in excellent shape, you're doing all the right things, and to find out that you needed open-heart surgery, complications with that that uh, set off a, a spiral of events. Uh, talk about that, because that was not without its own set of problems. Yeah, it, um, they went in and repaired the valve. And then four hours later, I had a massive stroke, and my right lung collapsed. And they had to go back and take me back in the operating room and actually put a replacement in. And at that time, I was watching them. I was like, all of a sudden, I could see my nurses, you know, walking back and forth saying, they've got to get here in time. She's going to die. And from that time on, I went to heaven from there. And... From above, I was looking down, watching them, and it was like what looked like my dead body. And I kept trying to reach out to them, saying, don't worry, I'm fine, please stop worrying. But it was like I wasn't able to reach them. And so that was my first journey to heaven from that point. Um, And it it was very, very exciting. You know, I I was just, I didn't want to come back, obviously. Um, But after, you know, every once in a while, I'd see them operating on me. And that sort of thing. But when I went to heaven, you know, I remember looking down and it just had this beautiful white gown. And I, I started like walking toward the streets and they were as golden as could be. I entered this gate and that was it. I had no white gown. There was nothing there anymore. But an angel met me there and she gave me a tour. And everything that it talks in Revelation, I have seen everything. The beautiful colors the uh, mansion i saw a library with a book all the books in it that obviously have people's names on them i didn't see that much but i didn't get to see bodies things like that because they knew i was coming back and so but there's a couple things that really stick with me is that when i saw someone like it looks like they grabbed like a, a, a fruit looks like a peach and as soon as they grabbed it there was another one in its place folk it just amazed me then i heard this celebration and I asked my angel, what is that? She goes, oh, someone's just come home. We have uh, a committee. We have a committee there that welcomes them. And if they have a member here in heaven, we take them to their family member. And I remember my grandpa was a farmer. And I, I, I walked into this garden, and I was like, that's my grandpa. 
And it was like I wanted to go further to see him. And my angel pulled me back. She said, you can't, not now. But I remember him laughing. And I said to her, you know, my grandpa was a stern German workaholic. He never laughed, nothing. She goes, I said, I don't understand. She goes, he's in heaven. That's why. And I, I heard my grandma. She was a great baker. And I heard her in the kitchen. And I went to there. I got pulled back, obviously, because I couldn't see her. But she was doing the same thing. She was laughing, and she was, like, just having a great time. And I said to my angel again, Grandma never laughed either. And she said, she's in heaven. That's why. And at some point, a couple different points, I did see, I did not see, I should say, Jesus, I heard him. And I could feel him hugging me. I could hear children running around, like, playing games and things like that. So everything it says in Revelations is exactly what heaven, what I experienced. That what, time. what was the impact that had on your life when you are back here, when this experience is over, how did that impact the rest of your life? It had to have a dramatic implication on the, on the rest of your life, on the rent that you're living now. It did. And this is something I don't talk about in this book, will come out in the next book, is that, you know, this is, I went to heaven a second time. Um, and, you know, like when I came back the first time, it was like, you know, I was like, I'm going to make this life count, you know, and that sort of thing. But I'm also a workaholic, and I got back into my workaholic pattern again. And But the thing that was frustrating is that when I came back, I continued to have more open-heart surgeries, you know, gangrene in my leg, and the pain just kept going on and on. And so what my deal was, I kept crying all the time and saying, I want to come back. Why can't I come back? And that was more disheartening for me is that I wanted to go back and I live each day for the day I get to go back. I tell my kids, my family, when I'm, when I go to heaven, celebrate because that's the, that's my goal. You know, we all want to go there someday. And so, yeah, it had more of an impact, but it did. I was raising my children then and it made everything count. All the little things in life counted more than they did before. You know, looking at nature more and things like that. It, those, all those things just, I was trying to relate to, I had a hard time relating, okay, this is earth. No, that's heaven. And I had a harder time relating to all the, the you know, different things on earth. Because when you're in heaven, it's perfect. And finally I talked to my pastor and he said, Jeannie, you know, when we go to heaven, we're not supposed to come back. So to come back to a world that has a lot of issues and problems, that's tough. A lot of people don't talk about that, that's been to heaven. They don't talk about what it's like to come back. And for me, it's been really hard because every day I want to go back. Every morning I get up, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go. It's like, no, that's not your time. I'm like, darn. Well, yeah, what I'm ready a, to go back. What an amazing story. Our guest on the program is Jeannie Enstad. That's E-N-S-T-A-D. The book is Journey of Hope to Heaven and Back. You can link on directly to uh, to Jeannie's website. I'll give you that here in a second by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Her website is a journey-of-hope.com. A journey-of-hope.com. Get the dashes in there. Uh, you go to our website and link on directly. You can Google uh, Jeannie. goes directly to her website. The book's available, of course, at, at other places where, where books are sold. In the beginning of the book, you talk about uh, we need to realize that our presence in this world counts. As you and you just mentioned that that suddenly life takes on a whole different perspective once you've gone through this experience. But when you go through the 28 years of pain and suffering, emotional and physical, how difficult was that to to, to hold on? In fact, you mentioned there were times I just I just wanted to give up. Yeah, and you know, I say that in my book. Um, there's different chapters. It's full of my conversations. I have all my conversations with, with the Lord, and, and they're, most of them are humorous, obviously, because I'm always telling him how he's got it wrong. And, of course, after <laughs> he hears me, you know, have a fit in what I, what I do, it's like, okay, are you done? Okay, this is the real story. Um, yeah, there was, I mean, when I got through the years, there was times where, you know, I lived alone after the kids graduated. There was times that, you know, it was tough. You know, and if anybody tells you they go through something like this and it was a breeze, they're not telling you the truth. It was really tough. And there were times where I was angry at him. I was so angry. I'm like, I would always say, I know you can heal me. Why have you not healed me? And 
yeah, I, I, I went through that. But the bottom line is that, you know, we can, we can talk, we can argue as much as we want. Bottom line is heaven is our home, and he knows the, t- the day we're going to, you know, the day we're born, the day we're going to die. And when I got that reality in my head that he knows all things, I need to obey him because he sees the bigger picture, not me. Um, and there, I have a, a chapter in a book where I actually, uh, one day I was going through four days of constant pain. In fact, my neurologist had to give me a shot that knocked me out. But during that time, I actually went downstairs and almost put a knife to my wrist because I couldn't deal with the pain anymore. So I, I try to associate with people that have loved ones that committed suicide. When you do something like that, you're not even in your, your natural mind because it's like that. For me, the pain took over. And the only reason I didn't do it was because I carried my Bible with me. And I was scared of myself. And I talk about that in the book, um, about all of that. Yeah, the, so the, the, it's the, not easy. You know, anybody says it's easy, it's not true. It's not easy. But, you know, God did get me through, and, and I lived alone all those years. So, yeah, he was my only hope. The book is A Journey of Literally. Hope to Heaven and Back. Jeannie Enstad is the author and our guest on the program. Let's talk about that second time that, that you went to heaven. If I recall correctly, that was what you were hit by a, by a, a, a truck, a tractor, a tractor trailer situation. Uh, what was that? 18 wheeler. 18 wheeler. Yes. I mean, it was, I, I can just imagine that you know, it's painful to even talk about it. And I wasn't even there. What was that experience like? And, and going back to heaven for the second time, what was that like? Well, I, um, you know, I had the, uh, I was actually, I had, um, just recuperated from having a stroke and that Friday, you know, the, at the neurologist's office, everybody was celebrating that I'm finally on my own, you know, being able to walk and talk and that sort of thing back to work. And on Saturday, I had decided to work out at a gym on my, uh, on my own. And I left, it was on St. Patrick's day and I left in the morning and a few minutes later, you know, we've got what they call black ice on the road and people don't realize that that black ice caused a lot of accidents. Anyway, I had my car slipping on the road and I was trying to gear it to a ditch. And in the meantime, it made two U-turns and an oncoming semi was coming toward me. He hit me head on and took the front of my car off and ended up my back seat. And um, all I remember is the jaws of life trying to cut my car so they can get me out and that sort of thing. But as I went, and I could hear the ambulance as I went to the hospital, again, that's when I went to heaven the second time, and saw many of the same things the second time, saw a little bit more than I did uh, the first time, um, and the only relatives, like I say, that had been passed, had passed on is my grandparents. So I got to see that again, but I got more of a, I saw this, the other thing I saw this time was, I saw this throne, and it was like, it, you could see, like, people worshiping, but you could only see, like, white spots. And I looked at a distance, and I said, the angel, what is that? She said, oh, people, you know, church is everywhere here, so people worship everywhere. And I thought, okay. The only, the, the big difference was when I kept, when we, when it was finished, and I started, I come back, I remember standing at the gate again and I remember Jesus there and he said it's time to go home I kept crying I don't want to go home please don't make me go back I want to stay here with you and then all of a sudden I remember turning around and looking and I could see his eyes and it just the top of his nose and he looked at me he said all right you want to stay I'll give you a choice I said great I'm staying and he goes but before you make that choice you need to see something and so about that time I looked down and I could see I was laying in a hospital bed, what looked like my dead body. And there was my daughter. She's sitting there holding my hand, asking God not to take me. My oldest son was on the, Sarah was on the left side, Brad was on the right side, and then Doug was just standing there. And I said to Jesus, what about them? He goes, I don't know, what about them? I said, they don't have anybody. He goes, that's right. I said, I have to go home. I can't leave them. He goes, I want you to know that's your choice. You had the choice to stay. I gave you that, but you decided to go. So when I came back, you know, it was kind of the same thing. Oh, my gosh, struggling in a body cast and that sort of thing. But at some point, you know, my kids had graduated, gone on to college. So it was a few years ago. I'm like, okay, God, I'm ready to come back. 
And I, you know, I'm, I keep praying in my Bible study. I'm like, okay, I'm ready to come back. I'm done. I raised the kids. And I remember him saying, that wasn't the deal. And I said, yes, it was. So think about it. You're the one did talking, not me. <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, no, no. And he's like, no. Think about the conversation. I gave you the choice. You did the talking. I never said I was bringing you right back after they were graduated. I was like, oh, man, I got to stay here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know, so, those conversations. There is a lot of humor. <laughs> there is a lot of humor in the conversation. So quickly, with us, Jeannie Instad, our guest on the program. The book is The Journey of, of Hope to Heaven and Back. And it's interesting because this book is inspirational. It's, it's a fascinating book and story. This has been life changing for so many people who have read the book. This book has been life changing for you. We've got a few minutes left in the program. Talk about how your life has changed since you've written this book and and put it out there to help other people. Oh my goodness, it's been huge. I uh, the book came out not quite a year ago, and I've been doing book signings. And I actually traveled for the first time on an airplane. I figured I'd be dead by now. I didn't think <laughs> I'd be traveling again. Um, and that's I'm doing a sequel to it. That's in my next book. What happened after the book is published? Because God kept telling me for years that when the book is published, that I'll be healed. Well, the next book is, Did, Was I Healed? And that will be in the next sequel. But I am doing a motivational speaking. I am helping, you know, working one-on-one -on -one with many people and able to help people to realize that this is not all there is. That, you know, we're all, we all have two things in common. We're born and we die. And only God knows what those dates are. But there's one thing I, I like to tell people is that both times that I was in heaven, Jesus made, had a message for me both times, and he said to me, I want you to tell my people that I love them, and I'm coming back soon to get them. And that was a message both times he told me that I needed to say. So that was one thing. But like I said, after the book was published, uh, I, my heart, I was supposed to my seventh open heart surgery, and it's healing itself. Doctors never seen that happen. And I had gangrene in my right leg. It looked like it was going to be amputated, but... Now it's gone back to real color, and I'm actually wearing shoes for the first time in eight years. Amazing. So, yeah, I mean, God's prompt that's the other thing I, I learned. When God makes a promise, he doesn't go back on his promise. And the other thing is that he knows all things about us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. So by obeying him, you know, and there's times that it was tough. But on the other hand, he, what sticks in my mind and what keeps me going is that he loves us so much that he died for us. And that with that kind of love, that anything he tells us to do, it's always for our benefit. It's not to harm us. Devil wants to harm us. And we have to keep, I try to focus that on, on that every day, trying to distinguish. But yes, yeah, since the book's been published, I've really been able to help a lot of people. And I'm, I'm loving it. I'm just, I say, you know, when, you, when you're doing, you're, when you're in your career that God has uh, created you for, you never work another day in your life. And I just feel like every day is a great opportunity. I have divine appointments with people, and I never know every day what's going to happen. But I, I'm always, you know, talking to five or six people every single day. Well, it's, people. it's still an amazing story. i got about 30 seconds here, but uh, a screenplay is a possibility, deciding how they're going to, to go about telling your story and how that's going to be presented. So obviously very exciting things are happening. The sequel will be out uh, very soon, and hopefully we'll have a chance to talk about that as well. I love your enthusiasm, your passion, after all you've gone through to be able to turn this into something that's positive, not only for yourself, but so many people who are touched by your message in person and through the book. The book is A Journey of Hope to Heaven and Back. Uh, Jeannie Enstad, E-N-S-T-A-D, is the author. Her book is A Journey, uh, our website is a journey of hopecom you can link on to that by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, link on directly to Jeannie's website. Book, of course, available wherever books are sold. Jeannie, a pleasure having you with us on the program. We will stay in touch and looking forward to having a chance to talk again with you. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure for me, Rick. You have a great day. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. You as well. Jeannie Enstad, our guest. The book is A Journey of Hope to Heaven and Back. Information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Back on today's program right after these messages.